Okay. So, I'm a butt. It's been a super long time since I've posted, but I've also been super busy. I know I said I'd try for at least one a week, but stuff. Over the past two we few weeks, the month, I've had two weddings, two children's soccer games, a birthday party, five days worth of an academic conference that had subsequently had a bed bug scare, and then all the while trying to work as much as possible, which left me with nothing no gas. The conference, while long and quite a, quite a ways drive away, did allow me the chance to go back to Iowa, because I had to take my friend back because we went together, and it allowed me to see her cat, Dexstar. Now, I heard- I said that's Dexstar. Star. Not Dexter, but Star because some people don't get it. Let me explain. So when there were a bunch of us living together, we all, well, originally there were the two cats. Uh, Kia's cat, Crookshanks, who is not a Persian, but is a rather large, fluffy orange cat. And then Sarah got Dexstar, who is a small gray cat. And who, those of you who, who don't know, Dexstar is a Red Lantern from like the Green Lantern series, only a Red Lantern, which means he's powered by rage. Yeah, it's rage. But yeah, so we had Crookshanks and Dexstar. And then later I got Catbus, who is from the Miyazaki, Miyazaki's My Neighbor Totoro. Although she is not a six legged cat bus, she is just a small orange, bow-legged, wall-eyed, fat bus. But yeah, Dexstar came to us when he was really small and he could like, he like fit in your hand. And now he's, we would call him Wee Wee or like Wee One. Cause you know, there was the large Crookshanks and then there's just this little, little itty bitty, he was Wee. He was so Wee. But yeah. And Wee Wee, Wee Wee was raised to be uh, what I call a parrot cat. You know, when you put them up on your shoulder and they'll stay there or they'll like, walk across your shoulders or like walk along your arm. And that can be very endearing and adorable when they're little. But not so much when they get larger. Especially when they get large enough to think that they should go up there all the time. And then they have- then they can get up there of their own volition. Such as jumping. Climbing. Which, I mean, can be fine, you know, say in the cold weather. Jeans, sweatshirt. That's okay. Not necessarily so when you're getting ready first thing in the morning and you are wearing no clothes. Dexstar. But yeah, Dexstar also likes his vertical spaces. I mean, he would probably rule this cat tree that I have back here. And the greatest way to get to a high place, such as on top of a door or above the fridge, stuff like that, the best way to get there is from people's shoulders, or after they've picked you up, say, first thing after you get in the door after work. He makes lots of good decisions. Decisions such as getting into things he can't get out of, or getting up into places that he can't get down from, or picking a fight with the larger, older, more experienced cat. He makes a lot of good decisions. Now it was this it was this particular one time. It was at the the bug place, and we had on uh, in on our doors there was like molding along the sides, but along the top, so it looks kind of like like a metope. And it came out, and it appeared that there was a lead. It appeared that there was a ledge up there, 
and it just fascinated Dexter. He wanted up there all the time, so bad. So this one time, I pick him up and I hold him, and I, you know, I pat him a few times, and then he like gets up on my shoulder and he like looks up at the ledge, and he looks like around at me, and he like stands up like a mongoose, and then he like gets up there. And you know, he tries to he tries to pull himself up. So he like lifts his back legs up off of my shoulder and tries to like scramble up there. So yeah, he he gets up there and he pulls himself up. Except that there's nowhere to pull himself up to. So I've just stepped away from the door frame just to get a better look. And then he just looks back over his little shoulder and he's all like I've made a terrible mistake. And then he just cries the most pitiful noise I have ever heard. He makes good decisions. And as far as I know, he still makes good decisions on that level. So yeah guys, thanks for listening. Hopefully, hopefully this coming week I can keep up and make pace. See ya. Just remember, the true story. Did you like this story? Help support Memoirs of a Gretchen by subscribing, liking, or even just leaving a comment. If you'd like to hear a certain topic, say so in the comments, and if I have a story that fits it, I'll tell it. PG-13 though, please. Think of the children! Just remember, it's a true story.